first thing I've ever done. I've, I've never been around other adoptees before. Uh, I knew I was loved and I knew that I was appreciated but I just there was still always something um, that was missing or that I didn't feel connected. I got adopted at the age of 12. We, I, my first time playing right was scary and it was not fun. I haven't actually been in involved in a group like this with other Indian adoptees. Uh, so it's, it's really, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. And I wanted to know more about where I'm from and my roots and where I come from. And um, I reached out to Wake Up. That I was five and a half uh, when I was adopted from India. And uh, I went through some severe uh, traumatic things as a child in India. I, I was here sitting and, and complaining about my life and, and wondering why was I adopted? Why did I have to go through these things as a child? Uh, why me? And, and um, just blaming everybody else around me. But what I, what I pushed away was the fact that there's millions of other kids out there that will probably never get to be in a chance where I am to even begin complaining about their life. Like they're still struggling right now, today, right? And um, that's where my heart goes out to. The, something funny is we both went to the same high school. She grew up like right around in the neighborhood, like next to mine, and we never knew it. So I graduated in 1994. And I was in 2004, but it was the same high school. And we never had met each other. Yeah, until this weekend. I took my wife over to India to show her the streets that I slept on and the places that I've been to. And I took my son, who's um, four, he was four, and uh, we had the same picture taken on, as my adoption picture 30 years later. And I gave it to my mom as a, as a gift for Mother's Day. My wife and I, we came home and we helped a lot of people when we were over there and we just felt like we had to do something more. So then uh, we came up with um, our uh, foundation, which is Hope for India's Orphans. I mean, me and my family were very open. Uh, we talked about it a lot. Um, the, the, the issue lied where they didn't have enough information. So the questions I asked, they could never give me. So, and it was always about the birth, my birth mom and questions centered around that. So they really didn't have uh, that connection that they could, they could give me. So that's where the disconnect came in because I felt like I wasn't getting um, what I wanted fulfilled. Well, uh, I'm an electrician by trade. And so I want to actually go and build solar panels and you know, give them a job and teach them a skill that they can keep passing on to their kids and get out of the poverty cycle. We, we were also very fortunate to live in a town that was very diverse and had, and not just diverse racially, but diverse, you know, there was LGBTQ families, there were families that were uh, single parents, there were families being raised in divorce, there was all different types of families and biracial families, things like that. So uh, we got lucky in that sense. I would say that we had a hard time when it came to um, just having to constantly explain that she was really our mom. You know, as an adult, I think it's been great to connect with a lot of adoptees and uh, just have a community of people that we can share our stories. And, you know, I feel like they can really relate to uh, the feelings of loss and, and wanting to connect. I don't think I would have appreciated it probably in high school. It, was, it probably would have just been like, I don't know but I definitely is more valuable now. I will say when I was in high school, we had a very diverse high school. There were like 27 languages or something like that in my graduating class. Like it was very diverse and inclusive in a lot of ways. Um, my parents also did a really good job making sure that we were as involved as we wanted to be in the community. And again, it wasn't necessarily as important. I was trying to figure out just kind of what I wanted to do and where to go from there. And I will say that the dynamic of high school did change after September 11th. Like I was in high school at the time and just that like fear of um, people being worried constantly made me worry constantly. Mm -hmm. And so that shifted a little bit. When it comes to choosing names, 
that you have to be careful that if you have a very Americanized last name and you have a child whose name is very Americanized, you actually get, you know, it, it kind of into society it doesn't it's not as pretty as maybe you thought it was if you name somebody you know L Smith and they're looking for L Smith the blonde hair blue eyed and it's actually L Smith the Indian like that doesn't always that doesn't always work a lot of people tend to push it away they don't want to talk about the pain and the struggles and what they've been through um, through that adoption process because eight it might be really painful for them too and two they just they're just trying to get away from it but I think it's important to connect on that level because that's that's really who we are. I wouldn't be sitting here enjoying this uh, time and having a future and stuff without my parents making a decision that was very hard. And I'm really thankful. It's important to know where you come from, uh, just to know your history and to be okay with who you are. You know, in a span of about a few weeks, I lost my mom and my father, and then my two sisters were sent to boarding school. And, um, and it was kind of unknown wh about where I was going to go next. Um, but uh, in the background of all this, you know, God was really at work because uh, there was a couple that was living in New Jersey at that time. And um, those are my adopted parents, soon to be adopted parents. And um, they heard my story through the family. And uh, they really just felt led by God to come and adopt this unwanted, broken child. And that was me. And that's where I connect with a lot of the adoptees even here at this event, too. It's, it's, it's that brokenness, that, that hurt that background of, of um, just destruction, uh, you know, in, in a child's life. And that's what I relate to a lot of the kids here as well. We raise money to be able to uh, build homes. And so we built uh, three homes last year and we repaired six of them. And, um, and that's what my parents did for me. They gave me a home and, uh, you know, I can't build everybody a home, but I'm hoping that I help a few and then they'll be able to help their own and they'll be able to do it by themselves. My parents are both redheads, and we have three Indian kids, so it was awesome. When we went out, we'd get all these kind of gawks and stares, and it was hilarious. Was there anything particular that your family or friends would say when yeah. they saw you with the rest of your family? People would ask my mom all the time who their father was when we'd go grocery shopping, and she would say, I don't know. <laughs> and they would stare at her like, why don't you know? How do you not know their father? And then we would just keep right on and we'd laugh about it because we thought it was so funny. I feel like uh, people don't engage because they feel like it's not their place to. It's not their, uh, it's not something they want to uh, meet, maybe even bring up old wounds for that other person. So there's, I think there's a, a lot of different conflicts of why people don't engage. I think a lot of people are afraid that they're going to offend or or hurt or um, do something that's maybe not or, or just in general bringing up a sensitive subject with adoptees but what people don't realize a lot of adoptees want to talk about it. It helps. It helps heal. It helps um, bridge old old uh, holes in their hearts you know and it, it talking about it is a way of healing. Like whenever we would have conversations about it, I always felt like I had the best peace, that I didn't have to fight all the time with people about justifying my family or who my siblings were or anything like that because we all kind of looked the same. And Really, my mom was the minority in our little nuclear family, but it was just one of those things where we didn't, we didn't have to deal with as much as some other people. I think coming here I've heard a lot of adoptee stories which are so much harder than what I've been through which are but each story is different and unique and individual in their own way and cannot be compared to another person's story but in seeing them I've learned that the only hope that I can offer for what I believe is the fact that God has a purpose for you that he wouldn't have brought you here without a purpose and a plan for your life. I mean, I love being here, and it's really awesome to have my parents included in it. And I would encourage everyone to kind of reach out. And it's, I feel very lucky that my parents are happy to do that and really wanted to come with me. And um, I think that says a lot about this specific community here. My mom has done a has done an Indies Adoptees camp before. I'm also from Calcutta, and I've met other people that were adopted through the same orphanage and same uh, program. Um, so I want to see what this one was like. It's okay to like talk about it. Don't, it's like, like can be taboo, 
for people kind of to talk about it or like just talk about it and like so people have more of an understanding um and I think like groups like this help a lot because you don't feel like you're the only one and I was four when I was adopted and I was born in Patna, India, but I was adopted from Calcutta. My oldest brother is adopted from Vietnam, and my youngest sister is adopted from Korea, and so my family's big on adoption, and uh, we wanted to uh, just go through Wake Up because uh, my parents have been with them forever. My parents told me about my adoption from a very, very young age. They always taught me to be proud of who I am, um, taught me that my adoption is not something to be afraid of, that I will have questions, and that it is um, empowering to just talk about it and embrace it because um, of my faith, because I grew up in a Christian household, and they taught me that um, adoption is basically a physical representation of a spiritual relationship with God. Um, and so I grew up always knowing about my adoption and just being able to embrace that. Wake Up's been very, very good to me. And uh, my wife and I were actually in the process of starting our paperwork to adopt. And our goal is India, but they keep giving us a hard time. So it's, uh, but again, God will know which, uh, who's meant to be. They had a child who they were trying to find a home for because she was failing to thrive. Mm. And at age four, she weighed 25 pounds. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, so we adopted her. <laughs> and uh, at the time, we didn't even have any money to do it. But with WACAP's uh, special needs fund, we were able to adopt her and bring her home. My anger was, was uh, directed towards my adopted mom a lot because she was the point person. She loved me the most, so I hated her the most. Um, and, um, you know, and as I grew up, you know, uh, constant anger and frustration and my mind would always go back to uh, the images that I had of India and what I went through as a child and um, really gave a lot of trouble uh, to my parents. And, uh, I mean, of course, this is all new to them, too. So they didn't know uh, how to deal with some of these things, you know. But, um, you know, as time continued, I, I truly thank God now for my parents because they continue to persist um, and love me and care for me and pray for me and just show the support that they did for many of those years. My eldest sister was adopted in 83, and then I have a sister who's nine months older than me, and she was adopted in 85. Then I was adopted in 87. I have a sister with cerebral palsy who was adopted in 88. And then 11 years later came the brother. So he was adopted in 96. So we, uh, it's been a long journey. My mom is an advocate and a, um, oh man, she does everything for adoption. I mean, she lives in Breezen. So for us, growing up adopted was pretty normal. Well, we lived in the suburbs, and so our family was known as like the diversity for the suburbs, and that place is called Lake Stevens. It was hard, but it, it also made you stood out, and you know, I like attention, so it doesn't hurt to be stood out. <laughs> I'm one of the co-founders of Las Saris, and um, we're, uh, our goal is to unite Indian adoptees and, um, you know, build bridges to the South Asian community because a lot of time Indian adoptees don't feel included or kind of feel open to join cultural events. Well, I think it's really important. Um, I'm an adoptive parent also and I just really feel like it's not growing up with a community. I feel like it's really important for my daughter to have a community to also go to and aunties and uncles that she can feel comfortable uh, you know and be mentored by as an you know older adoptees. I didn't actually grow up with uh, other kids who were adopted from India most of the kids that I grew up with were from Korea. You know I have um, siblings who aren't of Indian um, ancestries as well but we still loved each other and we would make jokes about like who your real siblings are because people would always ask like what's real about your siblings and like well I can pinch them and it hurts so I think they're real <laughs> um, 
What do you think has been hard about this event? I think it definitely brings up a lot of um, fears and just emotions that you had as a kid when all this was changing and you know I think it's tough as a kid because you don't understand the language it's really brought our community closer together with everything that's going on in the world it kind of ha gives us a chance to show each other solidarity. One of our family friends actually went back and did a documentary on the place where she adopted her son which was the same place where I was adopted from and they went to the back area and they looked out and they looked at this beautiful lake and they said what is this lake used for? Um, because it was really gorgeous and they were told that that's where they drown baby girls because they're not wanted because of their gender, because they're expensive, dowry, just having to pay for them in the future. Um, it's a struggle from the womb to the tomb all the time. Um, and so I really struggled coming to terms with the fact that I was saved from that just a few feet away from that very lake. That really is just a gift from God to be that close and yet not close at all, just having that um, saved mentality, just that I was rescued, basically. Um, but there are more than 50 million girls, gr girl babies in India, which are missing due to gender side to this day. Um, and because of that, it's just a horrible, um, I, th I think of it as a crime against humanity, that girls are not allowed to live just because they might cost more, you have to get them married off sooner or whatnot. Um, but it has just been something that has been really pressing on my heart to just be grateful for my adoption and to communicate that to other adoptees, to be like, your adoption is not something to be afraid of, it is a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful representation. You were chosen and you're dearly loved by your family and they chose you for a purpose and for a reason and there's a much bigger plan that God has for you. If you're adopting a child from a different country, it may take the child longer to adjust, speak English, you know, or the language of America, or not knowing, you know, all these rules. But I, I would, especially I would prefer this, please, please be patient with your kids. Treat them as you would treat your own kid. There are going to be days that it's really, really hard to press off. And finding, having something to anchor you down and hold you and really support you, that may be family or your faith or whatnot, but just having that there is really important if you're ever going to move forward and be grateful for your adoption. That's a really big part of it. What I really um, had to understand in my head, I was like, you know, God does love me. And yes, I went through those broken things, but they, I've gone through those things for a specific reason. And... Um, you know, I'm here today because I've learned to forgive the past. And it's hard. I, I don't, I can't say that I've, I've let go of the past because it's still a part of me. But I've learned to forgive. And that's, that's, the, that's where I find um, uh, true healing. It wasn't a very diverse group in, in middle school growing up in high school. Um, so it, 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 it was kind of a trying time where it was, I didn't know who I was or um, trying to figure out what I wanted or, you know, I didn't have the cultural upbringings or influences, so there was times in my life where I did feel lost and I didn't feel like I connected or related or I was just different and no one understood it. My sister came home crying. Someone told her that her mother wasn't real and she was so brokenhearted and my mom's response was, well you just tell her that you made, a, made me out of the best plastic you could find. And so it kind of made it so that we would have a response that was just as asinine as saying is that really your mom. You're not defined by your adoption. It explains where you're from, but it does not define who you are. Um, it explains your past, it explains facial features, it explains what you look like, it explains where you're from, but it does not define who you are to this day and what you can become in the future. You can determine that. I thought this was a cool day. It's, the hardest thing about it is getting people to warm up, in my opinion, because we don't know each other. Today was awesome. I mean, it had great food. It gave people a chance to get to know each other some more. And I don't know, this is just, it's a first time thing that we've done and I really hope it's a beginning of something new and bigger.